Hi everyone, we're going to start talking about platforms and when I talk about WordPress I will tell you that one of the features of WordPress is that it is open source. So what does open source mean? What kind of feature is that? When we look at our list of platforms, about 30 platforms, uh, a few of them are open source like WordPress, Joomla, Ghost. Most of them are not open source, they're proprietary or closed source or non-free uh, platforms like Squarespace, Weebly, Verb. Obviously you can do great things with those platforms, but what does this open source feature mean? Well, open source is not a feature like you can have this kind of slider or this kind of gallery. Uh, what the open source feature gives you is freedom. Okay, so what does that mean? Um, let me talk about four things to, to try to explain this. Free speech and free beer, the four freedoms, Firefox, and soup. So free speech and free beer. The way we normally try to explain this space is to say a little bit about free speech and free beer. Um, so by free beer, we mean zero dollars, free as in cost. By free speech, we mean, well, free speech, freedom. Um, sometimes to, to make that distinction, uh, instead of free as in speech, we might say Libra versus free as in beer, we might say gratis. Um, and the idea is that while free beer is nice, uh, free speech is essential to our very way of life. Okay, so what are the, the four freedoms that open source software gives you? The four freedoms are the freedom to use, the freedom to study, the freedom to modify, the freedom to share. To use means that you can take this platform, this app, this whatever it is, uh, and use it any way you want for any purpose, anytime, anywhere. Um, proprietary software may have restrictions on what you can do with it, or if proprietary software, if the vendor stops developing it, then you're out. You just, whatever you've created with that is lost, and that happens all the time. Um, with free software, you're not guaranteed that someone else will pick up the ball, but at least the source code is available, and hopefully if there's a community, it can carry on. So, free to use. Um, free to study means that the source code is available. So with proprietary software, there is no source code. Uh, with open source software, there's always source code that can be seen, studied, modified. This is actually huge. Now the obvious question is, we're all artists, most of us are not developers, so we are not really going to study or modify or do anything with the code of WordPress or any other platform. So although that free to study, free to modify is uh, our, our freedoms, do, do they really pertain to artists? And the answer is that they really actually do. Um, so one open source project is the Firefox web browser. You've probably seen it, maybe you use it. Uh, it's an awesome browser. Uh, there's a Firefox plugin that I use all the time called Fire FTP. Uh, I use it to put files on a web server where I host all kinds of different websites for myself and others. Um, and in a recent change, Fire FTP no longer runs on Firefox. Firefox, the architecture changed a little bit and this plugin that's valuable to me doesn't work anymore. Now I don't know why that change was made. I haven't, to be honest, taken the time or the effort to, to research what what the transition is. Uh, no doubt there are good reasons for it and it's probably better in some way, I guess. Um, all I do know is that a tool that's useful to me doesn't work anymore and how, do, how am I gonna get content on my web server? Um, well, even though I'm not a developer, even though I can't do anything realistically with the code, it turns out other people weren't totally happy about this change either. So someone made a fork of Firefox and they called it Waterfox and a plugin like Fire FTP still runs just fine on Waterfox. So I downloaded Waterfox and I now use Waterfox instead of Firefox. Um, it looks just the same because it is just the same. It's the original Firefox code base that someone's forked to whatever modifications were involved um, to let Fire FTP run. So even though I'm not a developer, even though I'm not studying the code myself, the fact that this is free and open software really made a difference in my practical life. Um, if something like that happened with Safari, you would be out. You don't have access to the code. You or no one else could ever modify Safari. Uh, reverse engineering Safari would be a monumental, impractical task. And even if you did it, Apple would sue you. So 
you know, Safari is a pretty big browser for a pretty big company. It probably won't go away, but, but things do go away all the time or become non-usable and you're just stuck with proprietary software. So, okay, freedom to use, freedom to study and to modify and to share both the original and any modifications you might make. So in my case, someone's ability to take Firefox and make that fork of Waterfox, that was really powerful. Let's, by analogy, take an example of soup. You could say that proprietary software is like a packet of soup, and it doesn't tell you what's in the packet. You're not allowed to know what's in the packet. It just says, heat water, pour this packet in, stir it up, and eat it. So you try it, and it's pretty tasty. You like this soup, but you don't know what's in it. Um, it may have MSG or gluten or something that could give you a problem or an allergic reaction, or maybe you're vegetarian or vegan and there are animal ingredients that you're not necessarily physically allergic to, but is opposed to the way you want to live in this world. Uh, but you don't know if those elements are there or not because you can't see the recipe and you can't change the soup. So you either have to just guess or try something else or go hungry. Um, so that proprietary software is like a packet of soup that you can't know the ingredients of. Um, and it will feed you, but it could be problematic. And open source software is like giving you the recipe. I might give you the recipe and also the packet of soup, so you can still pour that in hot water and eat it if you want to, but you can know what you're eating. And furthermore, because you have the recipe, you could also choose to go to the market and buy all those ingredients and make the soup yourself. Maybe it does have something like MSG that you don't want to use, you'll use a substitute. Uh, or maybe it's not vegan and you want to make it vegan, or maybe it's pretty tasty soup, but you have some ideas to mix it up a little bit and maybe it'll be tastier. So in terms of what your website can look like, open source isn't probably going to make your website look too different. But in terms of being a participant in building an open, connected, sharing world that I want to live in, and I hope you want to live in, open source is a really powerful feature. So four freedoms, freedom to use, to study, to modify, to share. Um, open source software, most of the time, is free as in beer. That's a side thing. But what's more important is that it's free as in speech, uh, and it's empowering. With open source software, the community controls the software. With closed source or proprietary software, the software controls the community. Uh, so one, I think, really is about freedom, and the other it can be about unjust power. So that's not the only reason to choose your platform, but you might consider open source is uh, a pretty awesome way to live in this world. Good luck with your websites. <laughs>